CDL practice test, Florida, combination vehicles, part 4. Question number 77. Which shutoff valve should be open and which closed? A. All emergency lines open, all service lines closed. B. All emergency lines closed, all service lines open. C. Emergency and service lines at the back of the last trailer open, valves on the trailer closed. D. Emergency and service lines at the back of the last trailer closed, valves on the trailer open. The correct answer is here. D. Emergency and service lines at the back of the last trailer closed, valves on the trailer open. Explanation. To test that air reaches all the way to the back of the last trailer, you can open shut off valves at the rear of the last trailer. On both the service and the emergency lines, you should hear the air escaping. Close the valves. If you do not hear the air escaping from both lines, Check to see that the shutoff valves on the previous trailer tractor are in the open position. Question number 78. You supply air to the trailer tanks by A. Pulling out the trailer air supply control. B. Connecting the service line glad hand. C. Pushing in the trailer air supply control. The correct answer is here. C. Pushing in the trailer air supply control. Explanation. On newer vehicles, the trailer air supply control is an 8-sided red knob on the dashboard of the tractor. The knob may be labeled pull to exhaust, push to supply or something similar. When you push the knob in, it will flow through the trailer's emergency airlines to charge the trailer air brake system. Question number 79. What should you do to prevent the crack the whip effect? A. Stay close to the rear of the car in front of you so you can make sure your driving is smooth too. Avoid hitting the car in front. B. Change lanes quickly to avoid the crack the whip effect. C. Drive fast so that you have no chance of causing a crack the whip effect. D. Steer gently and smoothly when pulling trailers. The correct answer is here. D. Steer gently and smoothly when pulling trailers. Explanation. As the crack the whip effect is unique to combination vehicles, you will have better control of the truck and any attached trailers when you steer gently and smoothly. Sudden turns, lane changes, etc. can cause the crack the whip effect and cause your trailers to turn over. Question number 80. When coupling a tractor semi-trailer, to test the trailer air brakes, you should place the tractor protection valve control in what position? A. Down. B. Up. C. Normal. The correct answer is here. C. Normal. Explanation. To test the trailer air brake system, first charge it with air, push in the red trailer air supply knob, or place the tractor protection valve control in the normal position. Wait until the air pressure reaches normal before you start your tests. Question number 81. To stop a trailer skid, you should A. Use the trailer hand brakes. B. Counter steer. C. Release the brakes. The correct answer is here. C. Release the brakes. Explanation. Once you realize your vehicle is in a skid, you should release the brakes so that the wheels can grip the road again. The trailer will start to follow the tractor and straighten out. Question number 82. 
How do you tell if your trailer's ABS system is working normally? A. The indicator light will go on and remain on. B. The indicator light will go on until the trailer air tank is pressurized to 45 C or more. C. The indicator light will go on while the parking brake is set. D. The indicator light will flash several times, then go out. The correct answer is here. D. The indicator light will flash several times, then go out. Explanation. If your trailer, or converter dolly, is equipped with abs, there will be an abs indicator light on the left rear corner of the trailer. This indicator will be yellow and labeled abs, comma. Rarely, the indicator light is found on the nose of the trailer. This abs indicator light can be seen in the driver's side mirror. This indicator will flash several times when the system is started. This indicator light will then switch off. If the abs system is running normally, if the abs indicator light continues to flash, or remains constantly on, there is a problem with your abs system. Contact a mechanic. Question number 83. Almost half of all truck driver deaths are the result of A. Speed. B. Following too closely. C. Rollovers. The correct answer is here. C. Rollovers. Explanation. More than half of truck driver deaths and crashes are the result of truck rollovers. A full load increase is the weight on the truck, making a jackknife less likely. But a full load also raises the truck's center of gravity, making a rollover more likely. Furthermore, many of America's expressways are old, with curved exit ramps that don't have the banking needed for today's combination vehicles. Question number 84. Which type of truck trailer combination has the greatest chance of a crack the whip rollover? A. A tractor pulling two trailers. B. A single tractor trailer. C. A tractor pulling three trailers. The correct answer is here. C. A tractor pulling three trailers. Explanation. The last trailer of a triple is 3.5 times more likely to roll over than a 5-axle tractor. This is known as the crack the whip effect. When pulling a triple, increase your following distance, avoid sudden moves, and steer gently. At night, don't drive faster than your headlight range. Question number 85. Low-slung vehicles can be risky at railroad crossings because A. They are more likely to jackknife on the uneven ground. B. They may take longer to stop. C. They are more likely to get stuck on raised railroad crossings. The correct answer is here. C. They are more likely to get stuck on raised railroad crossings. Explanation. The two types of combination vehicles most likely to get stuck at a raised railroad crossing are low slung units, car carriers, low boys, moving vans, etc. and single axle tractors that are pulling a long trailer with its landing gear set to accommodate a tandem axle tractor be very careful when driving such vehicles at railroad crossings. Question number 87. On a trailer, where is the yellow interlock brake, abs, malfunction lamp located? A. On the right rear corner. B. On the left side and on the front center. C. On the left front or left rear corner. The correct answer is here. C. On the left front or left rear corner. Explanation. On a trailer, 
The yellow abs malfunction lamp is located on the left front or left rear corner. Make sure you know where to look for it. Question number 88. What do relay valves do? A. Send air to the trailer air supply control. B. Regulate air inside trailer air tanks. C. Connect the service and emergency airlines. D. Connect trailer air tanks to trailer air brakes. The correct answer is here. D. Connect trailer air tanks to trailer air brakes. Explanation. Relay valves connect trailer air tanks to trailer air brakes to send air pressure to the trailer. Brake chambers. Question number 89. After you supply air to the trailer, make sure the air lines are not crossed and the trailer brakes are working. This is done by A. Applying and releasing the trailer brakes and listening for brake sounds. B. Turning on the parking brakes from the cab. C. Lifting the brake pedal. The correct answer is here. A. Applying and releasing the trailer brakes and listening for brake sounds. Explanation. After you've connected the airlines, double check the connection and make sure the brakes are working. Shut off the engine so you can hear the brakes. Apply the brakes and listen for the sound of the brakes being applied. Release the brakes and listen for the hiss of escaping air. Question number 90. A tractor with a N trailer requires the shortest amount of stopping distance. A. Empty. B. Lightly loaded. C. Fully loaded. The correct answer is here. C. Fully loaded. Explanation. The weight of cargo helps the wheels get traction. When a combination vehicle is empty or lightly loaded, its braking distance increases. The very stiff suspension springs and strong brakes give poor traction and make it very easy to lock the wheels. Question number 91. If your test of the tractor protection valve is successful, A. The parking brake valve will pop out. B. The low air pressure warning signal will come on. C. The tractor protection valve control, trailer air supply control, will pop out or go from normal to emergency. The correct answer is here. C. The tractor protection valve control, trailer air supply control will pop out or go from normal to emergency. Explanation. When you test the tractor protection valve, the tractor protection valve control, also called the trailer air supply control, should pop out or go from from the normal to the emergency position. This shows that the tractor protection valve is closed automatically to keep the air pressure from falling too far. Question number 92. In general, the higher your truck's center of gravity, the A. More stable it is when turning. B. Easier it is to turn around corners. C. Easier it is to turn over. The correct answer is here. C. Easier it is to turn over. Explanation. When you stack cargo high in a trailer, you raise its center of gravity, which makes the trailer more prone to rolling over. A fully loaded tractor trailer is 10 times more likely to roll over in a crash than an empty one. Question number 93. What happens if the trailer height is too great? A. It doesn't matter if the trailer is too high. B. The spring brakes will not work properly. C. The tractor may strike and damage the trailer's nose. 
D. The trailer may not couple correctly. The correct answer is here. D. The trailer may not couple correctly. Explanation. If the trailer height for coupling tractor semi-trailers is too high, then the trailer may not couple correctly. Question number 94. You are driving a semi and the trailer breaks away, pulling apart the airlines. You expect the trailer brakes to come on and A. The tractor to lose all air pressure. B. The trailer supply valve to stay open. C. The tractor brakes to lock up. D. The tractor brakes to keep working. The correct answer is here. D. The tractor brakes to keep working. Explanation. When the trailer breaks away and severs the emergency airline, emergency brakes on the trailer engage. At the same time, the tractor brakes will remain operational. Question number 95. The tractor protection valve will close and the trailer brakes will come on when there is a major leak in the brake line. A. Service. B. Parking. C. Emergency. The correct answer is here. C. Emergency. Explanation. The tractor protection valve keeps air in the tractor if the trailer breaks away or develops a bad leak. If air pressure drops too low in the service line, the tractor protection valve will close. This stops air from escaping from the tractor and lets air out of the trailer emergency line, causing the trailer emergency brakes to come on. Question number 96. What does the tractor protection valve do? A. It protects the truck tractor from skidding. B. The tractor protection valve is another name for trailer emergency brakes, which let air out of the tractor emergency line. C. It keeps air out of the truck tractor. D. It shuts down the air supply to the trailer if there is a leak. The correct answer is here. D. It shuts down the air supply to the trailer if there is a leak. Explanation. The trailer protection valve cuts off the air supply to the trailer, in case the trailer breaks free or there is a massive air leak in the trailer. Question number 97. When connecting the glad hands, press the two seals together with the couplers at what angle to each other? A. 90 degrees. B. 45 degrees. C. 180 degrees. The correct answer is here. A. 90 degrees. Explanation. When connecting the glad hands, press the two seals together with the couplers at a 90 degree angle to each other. A turn of the glad hand attached to the hose will join and lock the couplers. Question number 98. You have a major leak in the service line, and you apply the brakes. Service air pressure will escape and cause the A. Tractor spring brakes to lock on. B. Trailer tank pressure to be lost. C. Trailer emergency brakes to come on. The correct answer is here. C. Trailer emergency brakes to come on. Explanation. If air pressure in the emergency airline drops too low, say because of a bad leak in the service line, the trailer emergency brakes will come on. Also, the tractor protection valve will close to keep air from escaping from the tractor. Question number 99. 
How do you avoid off tracking? A. Drive at a slow and steady pace with little variation. B. Keep the front of your vehicle away from the curb and go toward the left lane. C. Steer and follow the curve of the curb closely when you make turns. D. Steer wide enough at turns to avoid hitting curbs, pedestrians, etc. with your rear trailer. The correct answer is here. D. Steer wide enough at turns to avoid hitting curbs, pedestrians, etc. with your rear trailer. Explanation. Since the rear trailer has the highest risk of off-tracking, you should steer wide when you make turns to avoid hitting pedestrians, curbs, etc. with the rear trailer. Question number 100. If your vehicle is equipped with dummy couplers, why should you connect the glad hands to them? A. If you don't, you will never build system pressure. B. The connected brake circuit becomes a backup air tank. C. It will keep dirt and water out of the lines. The correct answer is here. C. It will keep dirt and water out of the lines. Explanation. Some vehicles are equipped with dead end or dummy couplers. When the airlines are not connected to a trailer, connect the glad hands to the dummy couplers to keep water and dirt out of the glad hands and air lines. If your vehicle doesn't have dummy couplers, you may be able to connect the glad hands to each other. Question number 101. Here are two things that a driver can do to prevent a rollover. Keep the cargo as close to the ground as possible, and A. Go slowly around turns. B. Keep the fifth wheels free play as tight as possible. C. Make sure that the brakes are properly adjusted. The correct answer is here. A. Go slowly around turns. Explanation. Because of rearward amplification. A trailer is more likely to roll over than a tractor, and if you're pulling doubles or triples, the rearmost, last, trailer is even more likely to roll over. To reduce the risk of trailer rollover, steer gently and smoothly, especially if you're pulling a double or triple, slow down before entering a curve or turn.